ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in, liking, subscribing, sharing, showing your support, tuning into live sessions, you know, commenting in the comment sections of the videos that I've been posting, you know, the premieres, tuning into the premieres, you know, chatting away. I love it. You know what I mean? Definitely collaborating in the live sessions also. Subscribers since day one, recent subscribers, welcome to Renee Box Young. This is a platform where we simply discuss, critique, analyze, you know, and simply talk about the sport of boxing and lots more, as you can see there in the thumbnail, uh, you know, and lots more. There's a reason why I put it, you know, and those who know my channel, those who have been, you know, rocking with me for a minute, you already know that sometimes, you know, periodically I post, you know, videos and talk about other subject matter, you know, um, that really in interests me, you know, and um, that impacts me and that I grow from. And I believe that you grow as well. That's why I do this. That's why I talk about other topics as well, you know. Um, you know, I talk about, you know, other sports as well, you know, BKFC, a little bit of UFC, you know, MMA, what have you. Um, and breaking news sometimes, but when it comes to just like general news that really impacts me, I talk about it, you know. Now, and I want to share my thoughts with you because we are a community, you know, and I feel you can learn something from it, you know what I'm saying? Definitely, we all learn and grow from it, you know. And uh, this is just really... This happened, you know, recently, you know, by the time you hear this video, it just depends. Sometimes I post videos and people like months later see it and then comment in the comment section. You know what I'm saying? Um, for example, there was a, the passing of a, of a, you know, gospel rapper, you know, who was really inspiring to many youth, real, real positive. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, DMX, rest in peace too, recent, you know, passing. And But at, at, when I heard that news, as a matter of fact, from DMX about DMX, you know, rest in peace. Um... I was in a live session, as a matter of fact, and I did a, a 10 second of silence, you know what I'm saying, 10 seconds of silence during the live session for, you know, yeah, for, for, for respect to DMX, man, and, um, but why I'm, I'm saying this because, you know, I remember, I think it was around last year, yeah, it was around last year, uh, his name is Mr. Solo, man, Mr. Solo from Gospel Gangsters, um, he passed away, I did a video on it, you know, really, really impacted me as well, and, you know, and months later, well, Obviously, when I posted it, you know, got several responses from community, you know, people who, who, who saw the video. And even months later, people checked the video out. And they, a lot of people, some people didn't even know. They're like, wow, he passed away when, you know? So, you know, sometimes um, it just depends when you're listening to this video, when you tune in uh, concerning uh, these cases here. And I kind of want to talk about them, you know? This is just, it just really impacts me because it's like, you know, two different two different things that happen but similar to a certain extent at least when it comes to murders but let's get right to it man so there's two cases i want to talk about um why two because i didn't want to make them in two videos you know what i mean just just to you know put them in one they it, it, it's it's weird because they kind of happen around the same time you know around the same time frame obviously not the same day from what i know but you know around the same time frame uh, so let's get right to it. You can check it out. You know, links in the description of the articles. We're going to check out. The first one is ESPN.com. I want to focus first on Philip Adams. Former NFL player, man. Um, just sad stuff. You know what I'm saying? R really sad. Really, uh, you know, sometimes you think, why do they do these things? You know what I'm saying? I have my, my theory, um, you know, which is somewhat backed by evidence, I guess we can say. But I just want to give my thoughts. That's what I want to do. You know what I mean? So it says here, former, and I repeat, ESPN.com, link in the description. A former NFL player, Philip Adams, kills five in South Carolina. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then himself. So, oh my gosh, that's just horrible. Rock Hill, South Carolina. Uh, former NFL player, Adams, fatally shot five people, including a prominent doctor, his wife, and their two grandchildren before later killing himself authorities say okay so oh my gosh it's just uh oh my gosh you know what i mean i just can't i can't find the words when it comes to these cases you know from what i know of philip adams man you know his dad was interviewed briefly you know shortly after this happened you know um rest in peace to all those who passed away in, in this incident um his dad said that football messed him up, you know, when you, when you, you know, check out Philip Adams, you know, he's been on several football teams, you know, NFL teams, and um, it just seemed like he couldn't, you know, get to where he want, wanted to, you know, um, 
it seems like he didn't achieve greatness as an athlete, you know, um, just making it to the NFL, in my humble opinion, that's just, that's just amazing, you know, that, that's just amazing, making it to just the NBA, that's, that's amazing, man, so, but, you know, from what I think, based off of what a former coach said, you know, on one of his teams, one of the teams that he was on, um, you know, his dad, you know, football messed him up. Um, I don't know what exactly he refers to people out there saying, you know, what does that mean? Maybe his dad, because this is all fresh. So maybe, you know, Philip Adams dad is possibly going to be interviewed later on down the line. You know what I mean? Um, obviously I'm sure he doesn't want to talk nor his family right now. Um, it's just, just, this is just insane, you know, concerning, I can only imagine what the family is going through. Philip Adams' family, brother, you know, what have you, siblings, and, you know. And, you know, so so many people just, theor, you know, theorize on what, what, what did his dad mean when he said, you know, football messed him up. But we do know from one of his former coaches that, you know, he just, uh, he didn't, he didn't, you know, he, he didn't just achieve, you know, possibly what he, he wanted or what he expected injuries, uh, you know, things like that. It seemed like he was kind of a, just an average player. You see what I'm saying? An average player on the football teams that he was in. I personally think that he was kind of frustrated, man. Maybe he was frustrated that, you know, some teams let him go, you know, some, 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 some teams, NFL teams released him or what have you. Um, you know, I don't know how the politics work in that, but you know, a couple teams, from what I understand and from what I saw, that, you know, they released him. And it seems like he just didn't make the cut. You know what I'm saying? He didn't make it, you know. And he wasn't, like, you know, achieving what certain, you know, the football teams expected in a player, you know, to be, you know, uh, to excel in, in, in the sport, you know. So I feel maybe Phillip Adams was just frustrated. We're not going to know, you know what I'm saying? That's why, you know, it, it impacts me because it's like, you know, he was he was in the NFL, and I repeat, just to just to enter the NFL, man, just to enter the NF, NBA, what have you, um, MLB. I mean, that's just amazing, you know. And uh, to do something like this, you know, he must have been going through something. You know, I, I I kind of feel that I incline to that that he was probably just frustrated, thinking, you know, I, I haven't excelled in the sport, you know, as I want to do, and and you know. But who really knows? This is just a crazy shock. You know what this reminds me of? I want to I want to touch upon a couple things here. Junior Seau, um, years ago, you know, former NFL player, if I'm not mistaken, if I remember, this was years ago. He committed suicide. You know, I, I remember sharing a story when I went on a live session where we were talking a little bit about football. And, you know, I, I shared that story where Junior Seau, I saw him when I was around 12 years old. It was an event called the NFL Experience. If I remember correctly, the Super Bowl, one of the Super Bowls, uh, was held in Arizona. Uh, I think it was in Tempe, if I'm not mistaken. It was a long time ago. Um, and I went to that, you know, event with friends, you know, elementary school friends invited me and I was like, heck yeah, let's go get some autographs. <laughs> you know, um, I saw Joe Namath. I, brief I briefly talked to him, uh, Keyshaw Johnson, when he was going to the restroom of a restaurant. Uh, I chased him down. We chased him down. Hey, can I have your autograph? Hey, how you doing? You know, and he's like, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm probably going to get signed soon. You know, I'm, you know I, I forgot. I'm, he said something like that. Like he's going to get drafted. I forgot what team it was. I think it was the, uh, I'm not the best with football. You know, I've stopped watching it a long time ago, but he said he was soon going to be in the NFL or what have you. And I remember, I, I clearly recall his, you know, diamond earrings that he had on, man. <laughs> the things were shining. <laughs> But yeah, Keyshaw Johnson and, and, and the NFL experience, you know, walking around there in restaurants and stuff. I saw uh, Junior Seau. He was huge, huge guy, you know, and uh, with a couple guys next to him and he was walking. We were chasing him down, asking for an autograph and he was ignoring us and he was walking faster. Like, hey, kids, get away from me, you know. <laughs> but I remember that from Junior Seau and, uh, you know, he committed suicide from what I remember years ago. You know, and uh, there was another case, you know, Aaron Hernandez, former Patriot, you know, uh, former Patriot. Um, Aaron Hernandez, he was accused of a couple murders, you know, there were he was acquitted of them. He beat those cases from what I remember, you know, and then, uh, you know, he, he was accused of uh, another murder, right? He was accused of another murder, sentenced. Uh, he killed Odin Lloyd, right? Accused of killing Odin Lloyd. Um if I'm not mistaken, he was a, he was a football prospect as well, but you know we know Aaron Hernandez's story of him, how he was an NFL player, you know, successful, and you know what what 
what boggles my mind. This is what I'm getting at here. This is what I'm getting at here. You know, when you also consider and tie this into Philip Adams' case, like it boggles my mind how, you know, people who have reached a certain, you know, status or a certain level of success go out and do things like this. You know, each case is different, obviously. I know that, but there's something in, in, in the human heart that says this is not enough. You see what I'm saying? That there's something in our hearts that tells us this is not enough. And this is what I learned from this case, okay? This is from, my, from what I learned. This is what I learned from these stories. I want to share it with you to help you out, to help us learn and grow, you know? Become better people in life, you know? And not to commit these kinds of things. When, you, when we feel, this is how I do it, when I feel that something is not enough in life, I channel that feeling into positive things. I channel it into striving more, disciplining myself more, working more. You see what I'm saying? Working harder, working smarter, what have you, however you want to put it, however you apply it. I do it like that, though. When I go through life and when some things happen, you know, I have had several things I've even shared here, you know, like some expectations, which I would kind of share to a certain extent, I wouldn't give all details though, but I have been through, them, through some things where I would have possible big opportunities, man, and they just didn't happen or something happened where it, it, it halted projects. It's like, man, you know, and when I feel that I haven't achieved something or I don't feel satisfied, you know what I mean? I, I work harder. I, I, I channel that feeling to do more productive things, to be more productive in other aspects. You see what I'm saying? And I feel that, you know, these cases, you know, and, and Aaron Hernandez case, and we'll get back to that, Aaron Hernandez, I repeat, he was, you know, I remember he was accused of a couple murders, acquitted of them, beat those cases, if I'm not mistaken, not guilty of those cases. And then, and then, and then he killed another guy, you know, killed somebody else. He was sentenced for that. If I'm not mistaken, he was sentenced to life for killing Alden and Lloyd. And shortly after that, man, he committed suicide in his cell, apparently, apparently committed suicide. Yeah. I think it was a suicide. You know, I don't think it was other, you know, because you, you never know, you know what I'm saying? When it comes to, and I don't want to get into that topic, but when it comes to like prison and stuff like that, they can, even even out in the outside world, people can say it's a suicide, but maybe it was something else, you know what I'm saying? But from what I understand, Aaron Hernandez did commit suicide in his cell. He was hanged, you know, he was hung. It's just horrible, you know? It's like, you know, it seems like in Aaron Hernandez's case, he just, uh, he couldn't, he couldn't free himself from the street life from that, you know, from what I understand to a certain extent, he was somewhat affiliated with the street life, maybe even the gang life and gang culture, you know, and Philip Adams, man, it's just something made him snap. And I feel it was possibly that, that he was just wasn't satisfied, you know, he possibly felt, man, I'm not achieving anything in the NFL. Oh, oh, I'm not achieving what I want. And he just possibly snapped. Maybe it was something domestic. Maybe it was going through something with his family, you know. And he just went out and started committing this, 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 this these murders. It's just, it's just a horrible thing, man. It's just a horrible, tragic case. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I take from that. It's like, man, rest in peace to all the victims, you know. Um, and it just, that's what I take from this. That. If you feel in your heart or in your life you haven't achieved something and you feel like maybe, you know what, I'm a nobody or what have you, whatever the case may be, any negativity, convert it into, channel that into striving for doing something better. You know, striving and, and, and disciplining ourselves more and learning, using stumbling, stumbling blocks or what have you, using mishaps as advantages, turning them into advantages, turning them into stepping stones. You see what I'm saying? Turning them into learning experiences. Because this is just horrible. Some people just snap. And I remember talking about this in another video, uh, one of my recent videos, and it's similar in this case that we're gonna see with this police officer. You know, Kim, if I'm not mistaken, her name is Kim Potter. You know, um, I, I talked about this the other day regarding uh, an L.A. man, an, a, a man from Los Angeles, um, you know, who got killed to death. I covered that and, and talked about it. And I emphasize in that video how 
not to let our emotions take over. You know, unfortunately, it seemed like, you know, former NFL player, you know, Philip Adams and this cop as well, Kim Potter, they just let their emotions take over and they did things that now, you know, um, uh, it's just it just caused and resulted in crazy repercussions and consequences so so we go to kim potter's case now you know what i'm saying i want to share this uh, article with you also okay let me just go ahead and uh center that for you so this article is in um it's from uh, bloomberg.com you can check out check out the link in the description also okay um and it says here concerning kim potter i'm sure you heard these cases but I just want to go over it and give my reflection on them. You know what I'm saying? Um, it says here, Brooklyn Center, you know, Minneapolis, if I'm mistaken. Yeah, so it's said Minnesota. Sorry. So it happened in a Minnesota, Minnesota cop, white former suburban Minneapolis. Uh, yeah, Minneapolis P- police officer. You see how my demographics kind of suck. Okay. So anyways, police officer was charged Wednesday with second degree manslaughter for killing 20 year old black motorist Dante Wright rest in peace rest in peace in a shooting that ignited days of unrest and clashes between protesters and police now my question is this man when is this gonna freaking stop you know what I'm saying when is this gonna stop I mean I've said this before when I cover these kinds of things and stories I live in Mexico I've been here for the past almost 15 years i've been here for a long time you know and i'm doing great down here i'm blessed man i'm blessed up down here it's just awesome i'm living the life you know um but i grew up in 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 the united states man my heart's over there i've said it time and time again my heart's over there and um when i see these cases it's like my gosh i have friends of all races man i have childhood friends of all races uh, you know caucasian black latin american Mexican, what have you, whatever, you know, uh, and I mean, I have real good friends, man, and when I see these cases, it's like, my gosh, man, you know, I feel it, it it just hits home, you know, so, so, I mean, rest in peace to Dante Wright, and, and, you know, and this is crazy, because just like what this, this article's saying, look at this, it says, the charge against former Brooklyn Center police Officer Kim Potter was filed three days after Wright was killed during a traffic stop. And as the nearby murder trial pro- progresses for the ex-officer charged, that's uh, Derek Chauvin, if I'm not mistaken, charged with killing George Floyd last May. So this is all around the time. The trial's going down with, you know, George Floyd's case. Rest in peace, George Floyd. You know, and, and it continues to say the former Brooklyn Center police chief has said that Potter, 26 year old, 26 year veteran and training officer intended to use her intended to use her taser. According to that, okay, according to I'm, I'm assuming what the the murderer said, okay, I mean, she's a murderer. I mean, there's no other way around that. Okay, I, mean, I just that's just how I see it. I don't whatever. So on right, but fired her handgun instead. You know, that's just um, yeah, I mean, And the thing here is she's being charged with manslaughter. It's like, you know, I think it's because of her, you know, alibi or what have you, um, or her story at at least. According to her story, okay, I meant to get my taser gun, but but I got my gun and I shot away. You know, it's like, you know, that's why I I assume she's being charged for manslaughter. Uh, One of the reasons why. I'm not a lawyer and stuff like that. I don't want to get into that, those details. It's not my area. And I don't really, you know, I'm not too interested in that stuff. You know, it's just not my profession <laughs> and not my field. But I'm not sure why it's manslaughter. I don't know why it's she's not charged with murder, like second degree, you know, something along those lines. But let's continue in the article because from what I understand, it, it, it says more about this. OK, so. So it says uh, down here. OK, we go intent. OK, here we go. This is what I I understand here, and it's nice how this article talks about it. It says, intent isn't a necessary component of second-degree manslaughter. Hmm. In Minnesota, okay, the charge, which carries a maximum penalty of 10 years in prison, can be applied, the, the manslaughter charge, okay, can be applied in circumstances where a person is suspected of causing a death by culpable negligence. So it seems 
like they're clinging on to that to charge her for second degree manslaughter instead of murder like second degree murder what have you third degree murder whatever that creates an unreasonable risk and consciously takes chances to cause a death now, I mean, the thing here, it says Potter posted a $100,000 bond Wednesday evening and was released from Hennepin County Jail. It's like, wow, so she was released. So she was given bond, man. Bail. Online records show, at least. Okay, so she was scheduled to make her initial appearance, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it's like, you know, it sounds like that's the reason why they're charging her manslaughter. Um, but, you know, th just imagine... This is a thing here I talked about the other day, too, you know, concerning the other case I was talking about of, of the L.A. man who was killed, shot to death. Um, you know, it's like police officers, and I've said this before, that from what I understand, I'm not no police guy. I, I, I haven't, you know, trained in anything of law enforcement. I don't know nothing about that. From what I do understand, though, when I'm sure somebody here can confirm, you know, those who are tuning in, police officers and military men and women, et cetera, et cetera, you know, doctors, if I'm not mistaken, you know, people in the medical field should be trained or from what I understand are trained psychologically and emotionally to be able to withstand and carry and follow up, you know, carry through, carry out the duties of what they're supposed to do without letting their emotions and psychological factors take over and make them do decisions that impede their job you see what i'm saying they sh i'm sure they do i'm sure they go through some type of training they have to if not then the, it's a, it's a, it's a big flaw in the system but i'm sure they do i'm sure they do i'm sure i'm almost positive they do firemen and women you see what i'm saying i'm sure they go through these things because those are those are those are jobs that are like very intense you see what i'm saying and why am I saying this? Because Kim, police off, former police officer, ex-officer, whatever, Kim, who murdered, you know, the victim, with the, it was a traffic stop, and, you know, I don't know details of the case. I just know that, you know, she killed this person, which is totally unjustifiable in my humble opinion. But, you know, they're going to break down the case and do all that stuff, all that complicated stuff soon. And I don't know if they've released a, a cop cam or whatever you call it, right? The body camera from the cop. Um, she should have. I'm, I assume most cops in law enforcement have those body cams and they should be releasing them soon. So I don't know if there was some type of struggle, you know, if the victim, rest in peace and condolences to his whole family. If the victim was being aggressive and the cop tried to use self-defense. You know, I repeat, man, I, I use, an, you know, as, as when it comes to sports, you know, when I talk about sport of boxing, I'm unbiased. You know, I don't. But I do have to say this, like, when is enough? This when, enough is enough, man. This is just crazy. And this is just this is nothing like compared to what really is going on. This is very small. I don't mean to say it's nothing like this is nothing. No, but to minimize the, the, the tragic elements and what happened. Rest in peace to the victim. But what I mean is that it's too freaking much, man. It, this goes on way too much. And there are a lot of cases that aren't even covered where these things kind of, these things happen. And it's just like, you know, I've said it time and time again, like, you know, when I cover these kinds of cases, each country has their flaws. Each country. I don't care if it's the best country in the world. I don't care if it's, you know, the poorest country in the world. I mean... Each country has their benefits and their advantages and big flaws. Mexico has them too. And I don't, you know, there are reasons, certain reasons why I don't cover certain things in Mexico. And I don't want to get to too many details of that. <laughs> but there are reasons for that. But, um, you know, each country, even Mexico, me living down here, there are big flaws down here. Big ones. Horrible. You know, so each country has them. And one of the things that, you know, in, in America is like, man, law enforcement, this happens so much. And it, it's disgusting, man. It, it really is disgusting. And and it, it causes like an indignation in one, you know, in somebody. And which is why there's protests. People are just like, what the heck is going on here, man? You know, 
one once again dante wright rest in peace now just imagine now this is another thing imagine when this this person okay this ex-officer goes to trial and whatever kim potter and is given a slap on the wrist which it looks like it may happen they're already talking about a charge of manslaughter manslaughter you know it's up to like 10 years or whatever in minnesota if i'm not mistaken they just talked about there and you know but generally speaking manslaughter man i mean people get off with five years with that it's like i don't know ladies and gentlemen i don't know it's not a good look it's not a good look you know and if we go to you know if you go to the article and just and just read it look at i want to i want to show you something here again oh, something else in this article that caught my attention okay so it says here Former Brooklyn Center Police Chief has said that Potter, a 26-year... Okay, I was reading that. Okay, this right here. However, protesters and Wright's family... Check this out, ladies and gentlemen. Protesters and Wright's family members say rightfully so. Rightfully so. There's no excuse for the shooting. And that it shows how the justice system is tilted against blacks okay noting right was stopped for an expired car registration and ended up dead this is just horrible this is just horrible ladies and gentlemen how the heck can a simple traffic stop you know for a simple expired car registration which is a simple fine you know it's just a it's nothing it's not a big deal ended up in a freaking murder man ended up in a cop shooting the victim to death it's just like rights family members saying it you know the protesters saying it and i agree i definitely agree and a lot of people are saying it you know a lot of people are saying it it's like how how can this end up in a, in a murder i know it's debatable i know these topics are debatable when it comes to race, racism, it's, but when is it going to stop, man? When is it going to stop? It's just, it's just, it's just, you know, the tragic elements and all this in both of these cases, you know, I don't know, man. I'm just left speechless. And this is what I take from it. This, this former police officer who murdered somebody un, un, unjustfully, you know, and the former NFL player, Philip Adams, it just, emotion, emotions took over. And, you know, I take that from this, and it's just, uh, I think justice has to be served, you know. It, it just has to be served. And I don't want to, you know, continue talking too much, but, you know, just take that with you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, don't let your emotions take over and make you do things that you're going to regret. You know, so yeah, man, I, I, I can't elaborate anymore because, you know, the lack of you know evidence, information and blah, blah, blah. Right. So, yeah, man, please take care of you and your family. That's why I always say it here in this channel. Take care of you and your loved ones. Every time I go live, every time I, you know, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing safe. You know, being smart out there. Don't let a little road rage thing get take over you and your emotions. How many people are dying out there for simple little road rage things, man, for getting cut off for crying out loud? How many people are getting shot at just for a little foolish cutting somebody off and somebody gets crazy and, you know, look at all these rappers that are dying. And I'm talking about, you know, Texas rappers recently, uh, you know, I don't, I don't remember their names. I don't really follow the, you know, the genre. I don't listen much to that, but it's tragic. All these kids out there, you know, rappers or whatever, you know, whoever, 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 you know, living that, trying to live that thug life and. It's not glamorous, ladies and gentlemen. It's not glamorous. You know, they're all flashing their guns in videos and stuff like that, man, and glorifying all that stuff. And then they turn around and get shot. And then they turn around and shoot somebody, kill somebody, taken to prison at, you know, 19 years old, convicted of murder, convicted of, you know, RICO maybe charges, convicted of, you know, conspiracy of smuggling guns, blah, blah, blah. And, and, and I'm sure you can put names of these people uh, on these on these charges or whatever it's 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 too much people dying over senseless things out there man people getting killed over senseless things senseless things 
you know, it's just, it's just sad, it's just sad, ladies and gentlemen, you know, people being influenced out there, and, and, and think that, you know, and, and this is something I, I want to conclude with that, and I wanted to mention in this video that it seems like people, man, kill, it's, it's, it's killing somebody nowadays is like, is like, you know, killing an ant, I mean, it sounds sad, but that's how prevalent murders are nowadays, it's so prevalent, ladies and gentlemen. It's horrible. And I don't want to get into the politics stuff, but now Joe Biden, from what I understand, is talking about, you know, an executive executive order with the whole gun possession stuff. You know? I mean, I'm not the channel to go into that in details, but... And a lot of people are, are kind of outraged over that. Executive over, order over guns and possession and... I don't know, man. I'm not, I'm not approving that stuff. I don't know. It's just too complex and complicated for me to even get into that topic. But I don't know, man. I think Joe Biden's kind of like, you know what? Something's got to be done here. Something's got to be done here, man. And with the law enforcement, too, in my humble opinion. I'm not saying he's saying that. No, but what the heck is going on with the law enforcement, man? This is just crazy. It's been going on way too many years, way too many freaking years. And it's just horrible. It's just horrible. Lives being taken away left and right by law enforcement. Lives being taken away left and right on the streets as if it's nothing. As if it's just simple to go out and kill somebody. It's just it's just horrible. Horrible. So yeah, man. You know, I conclude with that. Take care of you and yourselves, your loved ones, your family. You know, and strive for, for greatness in your in your family. I'm not saying go out and be a millionaire. You have to, if you're not, if you're not a millionaire, you're nothing. No, of course not. You know, greatness is loving your family. Greatness is loving yourself. Greatness is doing good for, 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 for one another. I mean, yeah, man, don't let those emotions take over in your daily lives. You know, but yeah, man, Renee Box Young, thanks so much for liking, subscribing, sharing. Go ahead and comment in the comment sections, you know, the videos and, uh, Thanks so much, man. Take care, y'all. Take care of yourselves, man. Renee Boxy out. Peace out, man.